Hi, my name's Benji, and welcome to Dice vs Cards. Today we're looking at Ultimate Warriors, a two to eight player competitive variable player power game because all of the heroes or warriors you're going to be smacking down in that brawl in that arena have got their own different strengths and weaknesses and hand management because you need to show those strengths and weaknesses through the cards that you play throughout and obviously some good old-fashioned dice rolling to represent the combat so as you can gather from the name and the box art this is a brawl to the death you're set in an arena and you need to shiv and shoot your opponents until you're the last warrior standing. So let's see how this plays and whether this could be the next game for you. So the object of the game is to either be the last warrior standing or to have the most points at the end of seven rounds of play. So each player is going to pick their own warrior and each warrior has got its own set of eight cards numbered from one to eight in the top left hand corner you've also got what is effectively the player reference card that represents that warrior's stats on the first turn so at the start of every round each player at the same time is going to be selecting one of the cards that is left in their hand on a given round and they'll refer to the number in the top left hand corner because that represents your warrior's, warrior's initiative so once everyone's selected a card then it's up to someone to start calling out numbers from eight down to one because the first person to say yep I've selected a card from that initiative is the player that's going to go first so let's say for example two players selected their number six initiative card and no one had selected their seven or eight that would mean that there would be a tie for initiative so then we'd refer to your warriors size in the bottom right hand corner of your warrior card and it's the player with the lower number there that will then break the tie and go first so let's just say the bonsai player and the baobab player both selected their six it's the bonsai that's smaller that's going to get to go first so then dependent on what card that was selected will have a different number of actions they can take so here let's say for example bonsai selected the number six as we've said they'll then place that over their player reference card because that will also then be its new stat line. So now it's Bonsai's turn to go, you've got to then look at the attributes that are on the card that you've picked. So the, these three here in the top left hand corner below the initiative number represent the amount of movement Bonsai can make this turn, the amount of melee attacks he can do, and lastly, the, if there are any ranged attacks that he can do. So movement points, as you'd expect, allow you to move to an adjacent space for every movement point you've got. And then you can only make a melee attack when you're in the same space as another warrior. So to do that, you'll roll that many dice. Here Bonsai's got two. And it's at that point you then have to reference the defending warrior's armor attribute. So here you'll see that Baobab on the current turn has an armor value of two. So that simply means that when the attackers roll in dice, they need to get two or more to do a point of damage to their opponent. So here Bonsai is able to succeed with both of their rolls and they'll take two hit points from him that are once taken flipped over to represent points. However, you'll see at the bottom of the stack, there's one large hit point marker that means the first time you do damage to an opponent or anyone takes damage from you, that's worth three points instead of one. So the ranged action works in exactly the same manner as the melee, except you can do it when you're one space away from your opponent. And in the event that you're further away, you can still do a ranged attack. You just reduce the facing on the dice that you roll by one. So most turns go like that. You're picking the card, you're then going in initiative order. Certain cards have special abilities. For example, Baobab has got two cards, one that will allow him to mark one target so that they cannot attack him on a given turn, and another one that allows him to target two different people, or two different warriors with one ranged attack. So you're gonna carry on taking turns until you've had your health points reduced to zero, and then you're out of the game. But the game only actually lasts for seven rounds anyway, so these aren't excessively long games. And as I've mentioned at the outset, the winner of the game is, if not the last warrior standing, the player then with the most points 
gained from the hit points and damage they've done to their opponent's warriors. So that's how this game plays. What did I think of it? So who is this for? Well, it's a lightweight game, but despite that, it's actually got quite a little bit of complexity within that. So although it's super easy to learn, there's quite a few meaningful decisions you need to make each turn to maximize how you move and how you attack with your warrior. Perhaps you like it when they put Z in the name of a game to indicate plurality. Maybe that's your thing. So you might want to consider this if you like Arena for the Gods, published by Yellow. Or The Dragon and Flagon, published by Stronghold Games. So neither of those are identical mechanically, but they've got a similar sense of theme and vibe going for them. So you might want to consider this if you liked either of those. In terms of gameplay, well, the one thing that stands out that's really great about this game is the variable player powers. Each warrior has its own identity, and you can see that immediately from the avatar or the standee cardboard thing you can choose for your warrior. But then that's further expanded upon in all of the cards that you've got. So you really do get a sense of how quick and nimble they are, or how big, sturdy, ugly and strong they are. And that's great because that allows you to pick what you want on any given game, because there's a bunch of choice. And that brings me nicely into my second point, that the fact that this accommodates up to eight players is just a real boon. Because most games that accommodate that many are more like party games, you know? But this is more of a conventional board game with conventional mechanics. This brawl type game that will, is really fantastic if you've got a bunch of people around and you don't want to play a party type game. So, whilst I've mentioned there's a little bit more complexity despite this game's lightweight nature, the fact that there's a small arena is just going to mean that you're not going to be overthinking. You're always going to have someone to attack or something to do. And a larger arena will just negate some of that, especially when you're drafting cards where you're not allowed to move. That's just going to make things a struggle. So on the one hand, it looks a little bit cramped for all those many warriors, but it just works for the system that underpins this. So I also really enjoy the fact that that initiative, that card selection where you're counting down really is quite suspenseful you know have I left it too long to do what I wanted to do or am I able to do exactly what I wanted to achieve this turn and that announcing the number out loud it just adds to the tension and adds to how much you appreciate what you want to do on your turn so one minor nitpick would be in the player references so each warrior has its own couple of bespoke abilities and that's the one thing you have to keep referring back to the rule book for why not give each warrior its own player reference card that just uh, neatly jots those down yes you've got some iconography on the cards but it's not enough to tell you what they're doing so they could have done a better job in that regard but again that's a little bit of a nitpick because overall i really really appreciate the gameplay on offer here so in terms of the look and feel and theme of the game, well, let's get the best part out of the way. They can actually use the box as the board and it not look gimmicky. Yes, well played indeed. The art style is just what you'd expect. It's nice and cartoony. The component quality across the board is of a decent standard. So yeah, it's just a really good job done, both with the look and feel and the theme of the game, because you know exactly what this is. This is an arena type brawl, and each of you, your own characters have got their own identity. So it really does help with the immersion. So with all that being said, Dice vs Cards giving you a final score of eight out of 10. This really is a fantastic game that whenever there are a bunch of people that come around, I can't wait to get it to the table. So that's it from me. I'll see you next time. I'm showing my age a bit here, but picture the WWE's Ultimate Warrior. And then imagine eight of them in a ring. That is absolutely mental. <laughs>